Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet in two days. Let's begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you. Father, let your holiness perfect your ways in us. We thank you, Father, for the holy holiness that you are. We thank you, Father, and praise you. Today's sermon is called, Are You Ready to Serve? Are you ready to serve this year? Are you ready to serve the ways of the Lord this year? Are you ready to serve? First scripture is Romans, Roma, chapter 8, 1 through 8. 1 through 8 of 8 of Romans. And the scripture saith, Therefore, there is no longer any condemnation awaiting those who are in union with the Messiah. See, we have to be in the union with the Messiah, not in union with the things of this world. Why? Because the Torah of the Spirit, see, the Torah of the Spirit, because the Torah is spiritual, it's not natural, and when you look at it natural, you get in trouble, like you always see happen. In the word, which produces this life and union with the Messiah Yeshua. What produces the life and union with the, the Messiah? The Torah of life does. Okay? That means the things in the Torah and looking at it through the eyes of the Spirit and, and seeing all those things for your health, for your well being, uh, things that uh, are being. Uh, good to your neighbor and witty inventions that are all throughout the Torah. Believe me, on this one and and all these other things that are that are roles and statues. And if you follow them, not in a carnal nature of looking at them, but in a spiritual way that they're supposed to be looked at. And knowing that when they did the the sacrifices, that it was done. Uh, for a symbolic of what he did on the cross, each of them differently, but all through the cross. But those are the things that are different, but everything else stands. But you must look it through the spirit or you're going to see it in a different light that is not a light at all. Because the light of God needs to shine upon these things, of all of these things of the word, and then you'll understand them. The, the way they are meant to be understood and not half weighted and not all these different denominations that are created through this undifference instead of yielding to God's spirit and seeing it when in fact that it's a spiritual book throughout the Bible and we must learn from it for yielding to the God's spirit and yielding to God's word and, and the utterance that it has for us to say of what we read. And understand okay because the Torah of the Spirit which is produced life in union with Yeshua the Messiah has set me free from the Torah of sin see the Torah of sin is looking face value instead of looking at it, the fact that it's spiritual but most people these days look at the whole Bible that way and that's when there's error uh, and, and sin can creep in that way as well if we don't look at the fact that the whole Bible, starting with the Torah to the revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is spiritual. And so we need the Holy Spirit's help, and we need to glean from one another when the Spirit of God has touched us with great outpouring of things of the Word as well. Amen. Um, for the Torah could not be itself but it lacks the power to make the old nature cooperate and God did by sending his own other self a sonship okay and this and and the word son here is not the Western mentality as born as a son to a father no it is there's two words in Hebrew and it's the other one that people don't understand. It's the one that it takes the place for 
the one that actually is the son and daughter, which is all of us. He, he became that place. The first Adam was the first son of God, okay, for this, this people that we all are, okay? So he had to take and lower himself as a son. That's why that part where it says the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not talking about God's nature, but his nature when he was walking the earth in general. And people get confused and call it Trinity, and that's not what it is. It's talking about the nature that he carried for us when he walked the earth. But what Paul talks about when there says one God, one spirit, and one way, that's describing God in a whole and his, all his holiness. But this is when it talks about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's talking about the Lord's nature, the Lord God, Jesus' nature, Yeshua's nature that he carried. Because he was a son, he lowered himself as a son and he took that form of a man. But he was the Spirit of God in reality. Because you got to look past the image that he had for us. And look what's in the inside of him. That was the real Jesus. And what was it? The Holy Spirit. And that, that's who he was. And that's why Paul is talking about God's nature. All of God's nature. Which is God. God one God. One Spirit. One way. Amen. Um, where... The nature when he was walking the earth was described as a father, son, and Holy Spirit. And that's talking about Jesus in general when he was walking the earth. And because you can backtrack on scriptures and you can see very clearly that's who it's pointing to. And uh, because his nature in, in general is the spirit. Because that's why it ends with the spirit. The Holy Spirit. But he walked as a, as a father, because he was the father, but he walked as a son. He lowered himself to bring us back. Because we're actually, everything of creation is a son and daughter to God. Because he owes that creation to be father to it. And therefore, they're sons and daughters. And his love, his loved ones, his beloved, what she likes to call is a replacement for what a uh, father and son, or what we call a father's son down here. So he had to take on the sonship for us. And that's the other Hebrew word, is when someone takes the uh, sonship for someone that was lost. Okay, we were all lost, okay? There's no, we were all, we were, all were lost to what, what after happened with Adam and Eve. And so he took on the sonship not because he actually re in reality is God is no, but for us he did that. Okay, and so that is describing Jesus in general when he walked the earth, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But when Paul talks again, I need to repeat this because people have this error. They need to understand it, when it says one God, one Spirit, one way, and that Spirit naturally is Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. And that's why he says he has another name in Revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, because that is his name. In reality, it's Yahweh. But the most truest to God's spirit name is Yaira. Yaira, the provider, which means provider, and because he is providing for us. Even when we think we're in kind of a, the, the Ritz in the wrong way. God's providing for us. We just need to cry out a little more like Nicodemus. Sometimes Nicodemus gets a bad rap and we think of him as, you know, and we shouldn't. He was, what Nicodemus did is exactly what all of us should be doing. Crying out to God, saying, God, we need you. We need you real good. And, and when I tell you what, when the good days strike upon you, you need to be crying out even more to God and saying, hey, Make these good days go into my bad days if I have some. And you know what? God listens to our prayers. Now let's continue with this sermon. Uh, are we ready to serve? Um, let's continue by going to Colossians chapter 2, 11 through 17. 11 through 17 of 2 of Colossia. Colossians. Amen.
Okay, and it, and it speaks and says, and also, it was in union with him. You know, and him is referring to God. It, we all can tell by the wording. So in him, underlining of that word him, it says uh, the Messiah, the word of God. That's what you understand by when it's in him. It's identifying with God's spirit, identifying what he did on when he came to earth and took the flesh of a man. Okay, so let's read in accordance with understanding of that. Also in union with, with the Messiah, the word of God, and also means word of God, that you were circumcised with a circumcision not done by human hands, but accomplished by the stripping away of the old nature. So that's the circumcision of what it really represented when they actually did it physically that way. What it really represents spiritually that we now go by even more so of today. Amen. And so the circumcision of our hearts, it says elsewhere, but this really brings it out of the old nature. Okay. But there's an old nature in a heart that needs to be circumcised too. So that's why the word says also about that. But this is in general uh, of, of the old nature, the old ways. And what's the old ways? What was the first old ways that happened from the Garden of Eden that spilled them out of the Garden of Eden? What was the old ways? What's the beginning of the old ways? The, of eating the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Reverse what that is. And you'll understand perfectly what that tree is really about. The evil of the knowledge of good and evil. It's evil knowledge, see, of good and evil. Okay, so that when we, they ate of that tree, they were eating a, 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 a twisted version of good and bad. Okay, and when, and, when, and when they were talking, it wasn't the angels talking. When they said, well, they became like one of us, that was not God speaking that. They were, they was talking about the ones that fell. They were saying that. Because if if God was saying that to humanity, that would be because they ate of the tree of knowledge. Of, that I mean, not, but the tree of wisdom, which is the tree of life. The tree of life is wisdom. Is and wisdom brings about true, righteous good and bad, not evil good and bad. Okay, and so that's why it says in Romans to re renew your mind. In Romans 12, it says, renew your mind out of what? Of the tree of evil of, of, of knowledge and of the righteous knowledge of the cross. That's the second tree of, of, of life, which is wisdom. That brings good and bad of, of wisdom, of righteousness. That is the correct way and not the wrong way. See, God put a tree in there and it's real transparent that the enemy put a tree in there and uh and the test was for humanity what tree are you going to eat of symbolically of today what tree are you going to eat of are you going to eat of that uh, the evil tree that brings a wicked version of good and bad are you going to eat of the tree of wisdom and righteousness the tree of life of the cross the second tree of life um and the, the second tree of a knowledge of good and evil I would say is is the things that the Hollywood, the politicians, things of wickedness brings out is that second tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you gotta watch that. You gotta be careful. You really do. Um, let's continue now. So stripping away the old nature uh, and and control uh, and control over the body. And circumcision done by the Messiah. So the Messiah does this in us. You were buried along with him by being immersed. And union with him, me, the Messiah, the word of God. You were also raised along with him, the Messiah, the word of God. By God's faithfulness that works when he raised Yeshua the, from the dead. You are 
you are dead because of your sins, your misfortunes, you're, you're missing the mark, which uh, the Messiah, by forgiving you of all your missing the marks of, of your your uh, 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 control of, of, of wickedness are, are things that are not right, sins. Um, he wiped away the bill of charges against us. So he, he wiped it away. So we got to still confess our ways before the Lord, our God, every day, every night. You wake up, first thing you should do, confess your ways. Say, Lord, help me do the right thing today. If I do the wrong thing, I'm sorry. You know, make that your prayer in the morning, and then at night you confess your ways real deep with the Lord. And it should not be a man or woman you confess to you should confess to God. Don't be like Saul, King Saul. Be like King David. Confessed his ways before God. King David. King Saul confessed his ways before others, and God was not happy with them. I mean, three strikes, King Saul was out because he always went to man and woman. He did not go to God like he should have. Uh, because of the uh, regulation, it stood as a t uh, testimony against us, but remove it by the nails, nailing it to an uh, execution stake, striping the, the rules and authorities of, the, of their powers, meaning it's talking about the fallen beings that enslave this human race. We, they, they've been stripped of those things when we confess our ways before God and when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And he made a public a display of them, trumping over them by the means of, of the stake. And the stake is the tree. It, it, uh, the tree, that, and it actually wasn't a cross. It was a stake he was put on. And uh, later it became a cross, but it originally what what he really was put on was a was a stake, you know. Which and that stake became the tree of life because it, it made our wood, right? Okay, symbolically all there that had to be done to bring the tree of life back to humanity and to bring salvation fully to all men and women and children alike. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let's continue. So don't let anyone pass judgment on you in connection with eating and drinking. But that's talking about uh, of the things of that we do. But as far as following and doing the things where the Torah says watch certain foods because it can give us ailments very easily and or, or in regarding of the uh, Jewish festivals or Rosh Hodash or the, or the Sabbath these are the shadows of things that are coming but uh, bo the body is of the Messiah so basically he's saying that the Jewish festivals the Rosh Hadash, which is the beginning of the biblical uh, new uh, crescent moon. Uh, this when you see a tiny little light at the, the moon, that's a Rosh Hadash happening. That's a brand new month. Um, and, and then uh, the Sabbath, you know, the seventh day. That Those are shadows of actually what it's going to be reigning with God when he comes back. Because what what do we do in the seventh day? We, we we try to rest more, and it's not it's it's not like the Orthodox Jews do it, but it's not the way that uh, uh, real secular churches do, where they don't acknowledge it at all. It's somewhere in between, where you acknowledge God's creation more, you acknowledge, and you try to rest a little bit more. From your your labors, especially if you're working hard, you need to rest on the seventh day because God doesn't want you working seven days and slaving and not enjoying your family, your friends, kicking back, relax, and read the Word more that day, this day, and and um, you know try to go to a, a, a seventh day type church and uh, 
and you know, and then carry it on to Sunday if you like. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but you got to acknowledge what God calls the Sabbath, and then you can go to Family Day, which is on Sunday. You know, can have some more jubilee with the Lord and and with your family, if you can get it off. That is, um, it's kind of a sin how these employers won't give Saturday off to their people. Everything should be closed except for the necessary things on Saturday. Sunday is the one where they should be running more things. Uh, but on the Sabbath day, things that are this emergency should be open, really. Um, it should be in the reverse. But um, the, the, the mark of the Sunday was given by the Catholic Church and not by God. you got to re recognize that. But the Lord... Um, looks at it as a family day but it's not the seventh day the first day is not the seventh day even if even even if people change the calendar to make sunday lie on the seventh day that's not truly the sabbath so we got to honor this sabbath we got to what is the sabbath we're going to represent the final rest for his righteous in the millennial reign so the sabbath has a prophet prophecy of a millennial reign okay it has a prophecy of finally peace you know final final finally peace and Rosh Hadash represents you know a brand new start there will be a brand new start just like every month like clockwork you know fresh fresh for us will happen and the Jewish festivals representing uh, lining up with what he did um, not only one time, but another time that he did physically uh, for us and mentally for us. But we we got to be ready to serve and to be ready to serve. We have to understand these things. You have to understand that God has got everything like an onion. Layers and layers and layers of goodness of God. Amen. And there are a shadow of things that are to come. But the body is the Messiah. So he's saying, you're mine. You're mine. God has claimed you for himself. But you have to confess your ways every day. You have to have, if you're in the world, you have to confess some and say, I don't want those things. I want you, God. And, 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 and ask him into your heart to give you a new heart, a new spirit in you. And he will. Just like it says in scriptures. Okay, let's continue by going to Isaiah, yes, Yehu, delivering God, uh, 61, 1 through 9, 1 through 9 of 61 of Isaiah. Let's head over there, my friends. All right. Okay. The Spirit of Yahweh, which is Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Spirit of Yahweh, Elohim is upon me because Yahweh has anointed me see it's testifying and the revelation of who Jesus really is the spirit of Yahweh the spirit of Yahweh Elohim is upon me because Yahweh is has anointed me and God and it's twofold it's also for us too and in, in this nature because God's spirit is woven in when we're born again and our dead in spirit makes a living spirit in us but the spirit of god is yeshua hamashiach jesus and he walks with us it's emmanuel in the spirit with us amen to announce the good news to the poor we got to announce the good news to the poor he he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom of the captives and this is the Great commission, I would say for all of us as well. The great, the greater, greater commission. Amen. To let out the light, those that are bound in darkness, to proclaim the year in favor of Yahweh, and the day of vengeance of our Lord. What what did he just say here? What did God just say? To proclaim the year of favor, revival. And the day of vengeance of God, what the wrath of God, to comfort all who is mourn, and yes, to provide to to those in Zion 
who mourn the born again of Zion. Give him garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness in, 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 instead of mourning. See, God is trying to work with us. He loves us. Our Father God in heaven loves us. But he's a holy God. So you have to follow his ways. He loves us. The cloak of praise instead of heavy spirit. So that they will be called the oaks of righteousness. Back to the tree of wisdom. The oaks of righteousness. Planted by Yahweh. In which he takes pride. And they will rebuild the ancient ruins. Restore the site long destroyed. They will renew the ruined cities. To destroyed many generations ago. Strangers will stand and feed on their flocks. Foreigners plow the, the land and tend their vineyards. But you will be called the Kohims of Yahweh. The priests of Yahweh. Lower priests, is the, the, not the Kadal Kohim, which is the high priest, which is God Almighty himself, the Spirit of God. Uh, spoken of the ministers to our God. And so we will minister to God, meaning given our praise and love and adoration. Say, God, we love you, Daddy God. We love you. Just like a child. Have a child's heart before our, our Daddy God of the heavens. You know, and, and just really be grateful. Just like a child's grateful for their parents and their innocence when they do those things. You will feed on the wealth of nations and a reveal of their riches. Because of your shame, which was doubled, and because they cried and they deserved disgrace. Therefore, in their land, what they owe will be doubled. And the joy forever will be theirs. For I, Yahweh, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. So I will be faithful to renew them. And make eternal covenant, eternal covenant with them. And their destiny will be known among the nations. And their offspring among the peoples. And all who sees then we'll acknowledge, and they will be the seeds of Yahweh as a blessing. Amen. So just get ready to serve this year, because this is describing who and what we are, as in that born again nature that we develop every day. Amen. Let's go to Second Corinthians, a bet Corinthia, chapter five, eleven through twenty one. 11, 21, 5 of 2 Corinthians. Let's head over there, my friends. Amen. All right. Praise God. So it is with the reverency of Yahweh before us that we try to uh, perfect people. Moreover, God knows us as we really are. And I hope that in the conscience that you too know us as we really are. We are not recommending ourselves to you again, but forget, forgiving you the reasoning to, to be proud of us uh, so that you will be able to, to answer for those who boast against a person appearing rather than the inner and, and then the inner qualities, and if you are it's, it's saying it is for God's sake, and if you are in uh, saying it is it is for the sake, for the Messiah's love has hold on us because we are. Confident that one man died on our behalf of all mankind, which implies that all mankind was already dead. That he died on our behalf, and all other that 
those who live shall not live any longer by themselves, but for the one who their behalf died and was raised. So then now, we do not look at anyone from worldly viewpoints. Even we once regarded the Messiah from worldly viewpoint. We do we do we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is united with the Messiah, he is a new creature, a new being. The old has passed. Look, what has come is flesh and new. And it is all from God, who through the Messiah has reconciled us to himself and has given us the work of reconciliation, which is that God is the Messiah, was reconciled mankind to himself, not counting their sins against them, and trusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors of the Messiah. In effort, God is making his appeal through us. What we do is appear on himself of the Messiah. Be reconciled to God. God made his sinless man be sin offering on our behalf so that the union with the Messiah, the Word of God, we might fully share in God's righteousness and God's righteousness and a good relationship with God and the wisdom of his righteousness and and the right standing with God, a right relationship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us get ready to serve. Amen. For, for God Almighty. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 through 22. Devern. Amen. Which means the verb means the words. Amen. The verb. 12 for 22 of 10 in Deuteronomy. The room, word of God. The words. Amen. And it says, So now, Israel, all that Yahweh your God asks for you is to reverence Yahweh your God. Follow all his ways. Be in his ways. In the Messiah's ways. And the Word of God's ways in God's ways. Amen. Love Him. Serve Yahweh with your, your God with all your heart and all your being to obey for you are own good. The, the mitzvah, the uh, good rulings and regulations of Yahweh which I am giving you today. See the sky, the heavenly the heaven beyond the sky, the earth, and everything on it, and all beyond it, to, to Yahweh your God. Only Yahweh took enough pleasure in your ancestors to love them, and choose their descendants after them, yourselves, above all people, as, as he still does today. Therefore circumcise the foreskins of your heart, don't be stiff naked any longer. Do not be lukewarm and no longer. For Yahweh your God is a God of all things, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, and great, mighty, and awesome God who has no favors and accepted of bribes. He assures justice for the orphan and widow. He loves the foreigner. He gives him food and clothes. Therefore, you are to love the foreigners since you were foreigners in the land of Egypt and the land of sin is talking symbolically here. You are to reverent 
Yahweh your God. Serve the Messiah, the Word of God. Cling to the Word of God, the Messiah. Swear by His name. He is the praise. He is your God who has done for you great and awesome things which you have seen with your own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt and with their own 70 people. But now Yahweh your God has made you numerous as many as the stars in the sky. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready to serve today? Let's continue by going to 1 Corinthians. All of Corinthia, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And this is God's heart scripture, one of God's heart scriptures. So let's take it in very well. Amen. And it says, Don't you know that you people are God's temple, that God's spirit lives in you? So if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him or her. For God's temple is holy. For God's temple is holy. And you yourself is that temple. So stop looking for an, a third symbolic temple. Even though it will be made. It has nothing to do. It is a spiritual temple within men and women. The two were symbolic of that very thing. The third one it will not be. The third one is has nothing to do with what it talks about in Matthew. The death, the desolation, abomination happens to the born again if they're not watching where they're going and they go away. And I warn you this day, don't be one of them to do so this year. Because the great falling away is happening as well as the wrath of God on the wicked as well as on the righteous, his righteous and his elect, his revival. Be in spiritual Goshev as these things happen symbolically. Amen. Let's go now to Psalms. Tehillim 141, 10 through 10, uh, 1 through 10, 1 through 10 of 141 of Psalms. Let's head over there, my friends. And the word of God speaketh and saith, Yahweh, I have called you. I have called you. Come to me quickly. Listen to my pleads when I call to you. Let my prayers be like an incense set before you. My upright hands like an evening service. Let the, the guard Yahweh over my mouth. Let watch over the door of my lips. Don't let my heart turn to anything evil or anything me to act wickedly with men and women who are evildoers keep me from the eating their uh, their dedications of bribes let the righteous strike me let the, let him let the messiah the word of god correct me it will be an act of love let my hands not refuse such chosen oils for I will keep on praying about their wickedness. And their rulers are thrown down to the cliffs. And their politicians are thrown down to the cliffs. Their wickedness will, will hear that many words with flatteries. As when one plows and breaks ground into the sod. Are over bones are stewed in the mouth of Shiloh of hell. For my eyes, Yahweh, Yahweh are on you, not on government, not on politicians, not on Hollywood, not on the corporate news media, but on the on the word of God, on the spirit of God, and, and on God Himself. Amen. Hallelujah, our Father, which is in heaven, amen. For my eyes, Yahweh, Yahweh are on you, and I take refuge. I don't pour out, I pour out my life, and keep me from the traps they have set for me. Keep me from the traps the politicians have set for me. 
from the snares of the evildoer, corporate news being in Hollywood. And let the, the wicked fall. Let the wicked politicians fall. Let the wicked Hollywood fall. Let the wicked corporations fall. Let the wicked uh, 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 corporate news media fall into their own nets of evil. While I pass by safely. While we pass by safely. Because our refuge is in God and not into things of Baal, but into Yahweh. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the last scripture, Psalms 147, I mean, um, 47, sorry, 47, 1 through 9. 1 through 9 of 47 of Psalms, the Helam. Break out in song. Amen. And it speaks and they saith, Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with cries of joy. For Yahweh, El Elyon, the Most High, is awesome. A great king over the earth. He makes the people Subject to us. Amen. So let's stop being subject to these people that worship Baal in the world. They are subject to the righteous that worship Yahweh, the only true God that has only one spirit, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we're part of that way. Amen. A great king over all the earth. He makes people subject to us. He puts nations under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us. He, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God goes up and shouts and acclaims. Yahweh is blasting on the shofar. The, or what some say great shofar. Some translations, but it's God's shofar. He blows. He blows the shofar. God does. I wouldn't say it here. Cut and dry, you know. Yahweh blasts on his shofar. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is king of all over the earth. Sing praises with your mistrels. God rules the nations. God sits on his holy throne. He's a holy God and he's a holy throne. Amen. Because he's the holy of holies. The leaders of the people gathered together. The people of God of Abraham. For the rulers of the earth belong to God. Meaning they got to do what God wants or they're going to be replaced when God's ready. And he's ready. Who executes on on I'm on high? Amen. So let's get ready to serve the living God this year. Let's get ready to serve our living God this year. Let's get ready to hearken onto the voice of the the living God. Let's do what He wants. Let's do what His will is for our lives. Let us strengthen one another to do good on this earth. Let us warn the wicked people of their ways so they can come to repentance. Let's warn these evil tyrants that are on all the nations of the world that they better repent and stop serving Baal and, and repent and get saved and serve Yahweh, the name above all names, Yahweh, which Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus proclaimed and told specifically in the Gospels Four times who he really was, Yahweh, and he's the spirit of Yahweh. Because people look on the outside so much that they look on the Bible the same way. And they expect to look at God that way and in the flesh. And that's not him. They, he took on flesh. Who did? The Spirit of God. So what does that make Jesus? The Spirit of God. And when it talks about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I like to repeat myself because this is such an error in the church, in the synagogue, you can't even believe it. Because 
that belief came from the pagans. They believe in a trinity. We don't and should never do that because it says God's one. It's one God, one spirit, one way. And we're inserted in his way when we get saved and we follow his ways. Amen. So when it talks about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it, you got to retract what it's talking about. It's talking about Jesus when he was walking in the flesh. He was a father and he was son and he's a Holy Spirit. Jesus, it's talking about Jesus, not talking about God in general. It's talking about what he was representing on earth. He was the father, but he lowered himself as a son. Jesus was the father, but he lowered himself as a son for our benefits because there's two words of sonship. One of them is born that way. One becomes that way, a replacement for someone else that died. And we died because of, of what Adam and Eve did. And God resurrected us as sons and daughters as being the, the being that sonship for us, not for himself. And, and he's the spirit of God. So Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But God in general is one God, one spirit, one way. Amen. So let us know the truth and let the truth set us free. So are you ready to serve this year? Are you ready to serve this year? Are you ready to do things for the God Almighty that loves you? Amen. God bless you. The Lord keep in all his ways and shine upon you and bring you the rest of God. Of God's shalom this year. As you do his will on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let me pray for you lost. Arabs, time to get saved. Christians, time to get saved. Jews, it's time to get saved. Native Americans, sea people, land people, people in outer space and the space stations and elsewhere. Time to get saved. It's time to get saved. People that are, that are in the oceans, that are, that are uh, the Navy and, and all these other things that are under there. Time to get saved. Time to get right with God. For God reveals all things to his servants, the prophets. Amen. Are you ready to get saved? Are you ready to save, receive the glory of God in your life? Do not go the way of Baal anymore. Be saved from the, these Babylonian ways of this world. Be saved. Pray this prayer and be saved. Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my, my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family, God, my little brothers and sisters. I pray for a hedge of protection around you. I also ask you this day to be water baptized. Just as the first thing he did with the earth, it was form and void and water was on the deep. He, the first thing he did with this earth the, was he water baptized the earth. So water baptism goes all the way back to the beginning of creation. Amen. So don't let nobody say that water baptism is not important because it is very important. Because why did God himself in the flesh get water baptized? Amen. Water baptism is very important. And when you get saved, and you really ask the Lord into your life like you did, the baptism of the Spirit of God happens as well. But water baptism is the second witness for all to see. And, and, and there's a lot of emotions. So get ready for that, okay? And, and get in a little class. They'll, they'll fill in some more of the gaps that uh, would take a whole sermon to really talk and hit on on water baptism which I pro will probably do someday water baptism and then the, there, there's the baptism of the spirit that happens first and then the water baptism and then the daily one of the baptism of God's blood and proclaiming him and the Lamb of God for for the and confessing our ways before the Lord and that's a, that's a, that's the the blood covenant 
water baptism of what he did on the cross that we daily ask to cleanse us. Amen. Those are the three main ones. Okay, and they're very, all very powerful. Amen. And you, you do need to be water baptized. But before that, even right now, we're gonna I'm gonna pray for the baptism of the Spirit of God on you. Thank you, Father. I pray for the baptism of the Spirit of God to come upon them now and hear them and make them whole. And may the fire of the Spirit of God, of your Spirit, flow upon them now in the name of Shu HaMashiach. I bind all diseases. I bind all sicknesses. I bind uh, debt in the name of, of the Lord. I bind all hurt and pains of the family causing them. I bind all these things and I command it to straighten itself out in their behalfs. And I thank you for for that for all these things. For my little brothers and sisters that are veteran and youth alike. For the for them to be refreshed this day. Amen. Shalom. 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 Wholeness that brings peace that passes all understanding. Never severed, never broken, complete peace of God be upon thee. And wholeness that brings everything to clearness and goodness of God. Amen. Shalom. May the living God be with you and never, never leave you, never forsake you. So don't forsake God and leave him. Amen. And daily take the word of God and, and get a, a cord around you. Homemade make them with the red and the purple and the and the dark blue, representing the holy temple colors, representing it, the colors in heaven, you know. But wrap that it says wrap around you, it says that he's wrapped around us. The things of heaven is wrapped around us, and his word, the word of God, the word of God here, put it on your forehead and say, Father. Pray this way, Father, may this word take over on my mind and my heart. May it be true with everything. And, and may this symbolization, this cord wrapped around my wrist, my right of my wrist, represent that I'm true with you. And my co the covenant of God is with us. That he, and what the sacrifice the cross did and what he did for us and the things of heaven and, and his glory be with us. Amen. God bless you. The Lord keep you. Shalom. Till next time. Amen.